Sylvan Heights Bird Park gives visitors an unforgettable up-close experience with more than 2,000 ducks, geese, swans, and other exotic birds from around the world. This one wants to go down. Okay, Brent Lovick from <laughs> Sylvan Heights Bird Park is here. Thank you. With some baby swans. So wh who's this little girl or guy I was holding? Well, these two little ones are called mute swans, and okay. they're cygnets, and cygnet means baby swans. Okay. And mute swans originate from uh, Europe, uh, but they've been introduced to uh, North America. So if you ever see the quintessential swans, you know Valentine's, they always have the two swans. Oh, like the big ones. Yeah, yes. the big ones. That's what these guys are going to look like <gasps> when they're fully grown. So, you know, wow. they're going to get pretty high, and they'll have beautiful white feathers all over them, and then, uh, you know, little black Oh, look, ones. they're almost making that heart. Well, they well, were. Uh, yeah. <laughs> With their faces. Like, All right, guys, let's know. They're like, <laughs> but uh, but they are they're just they're just little guys right now. They're about a week old or so, so they have little small web feet. You can see like the little, the little, little web, web feet. feet. That yeah. Got. yeah, they were scratching me a little bit yeah. when I put my hand under there. I was like, the... watch out. So they've been eating. What do <laughs> yeah. they eat? Well, they eat a crumble. We actually give them a, a crumble that has high protein because mm -hmm. the first week they still need a lot of protein to develop, mm -hmm. and then after that we wean them off. Actually, birds don't need food or water the first day because they're still uh, living off what was in the egg sac. Right. So uh, it's important to make sure to give them that kind of uh, protein protein as they develop. So can you tell us for people who haven't been to the bar, the bird park what sort of things go on there and just in general of like what you can see in different birds? Well, you're going to see birds from all around the world. I mean, our focus is the the ducks, <laughs> that's right. The ducks, geese and the swans, but we also have uh, parrots, cranes, flamingos, oh, owls, beautiful. ibis. What is that uh, we're seeing right that's here? That's a scarlet ibis. They're found oh in South gosh, America and we beautiful. have them in our South American exhibit. When they're babies, they're totally black and as they get bigger, they get that beautiful red color. And that one's actually building a nest right now. Wow. So it'll build these nests and then they'll have the babies and then with the bill they actually feed the babies with that bill and they get their coloration from crustaceans they eat. If you're like flamingos, you get the pink right? So it's the same thing with the ibis, it's the uh, coloration uh, from what they eat. So, so do they all have the same diet? Yeah, um, uh, with the ibis, yeah, it's that same fishy diet. Now with mm -hmm. waterfowl, we're not worried about coloration and stuff, so they just get the pellets and stuff, which would be similar to what they might eat in the wild, which is important for development. Okay, and then you also have events for kids, like scavenger hunts and whatnot. So walk me through the scavenger hunt. Well, scavenger works. hunt basically is a, an additional activity anyone can do. It's like a couple dollars when they get there. Mm -hmm. um, you can also buy little feed sticks, so you can hand feed our parakeets. Cool. And you can buy bags of feed where you can hand feed our flamingos Ooh. and our ducks and our fish, but the scavenger hunt is an activity. You go around and you try and find the birds and the different things on there. And uh, we also have a uh, thing where you can uh, camp in the dark in the treehouse. That's for groups. Uh -huh. And uh, we have uh, special events once a week, uh, once a month called Matilda and Friends, which is based on our seriopsis. So we try to keep new activities going on year round. So if you're coming back for a second time, there's always something different to do. Tell us about the science festival going on. Well, we're really honored to be part of it. We've already done two events. We're part of the North Carolina Science Festivals that goes on all the way from the mountains to the coast. And there's events going on at not just attractions, but other businesses and places mm -hmm. to try and get young people and old involved in science. Mm -hmm. And we have a talk going on this Saturday. So if you're coming out, it's free. So you just, you know, come to the park and you'll get to experience that. But if you're not even in our neck of the woods, please look out for what other science, North Carolina Science Festival events are going on. Because it's a great opportunity for people to experience sciences throughout the whole state of North Carolina. And your neck of the woods is northeastern. Yeah, North we're, we're in Scotland Neck, North Carolina, where we park Don't in the middle of the road and we have no uh, parking uh, traffic lights but we have one of the largest bird parks in the country. <laughs> That's incredible. I can't believe that this one turns into a gigantic swan. I've never seen them in the Do small you want to bring size. it back full size? Yeah, oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> you do, I'm sure you don't transport them at once. I, I, can, I can bring oh, you one. Do? Yeah, if you guys are up for it. We'll. We're up for anything. Wow. Bye, you guys. Okay, no, Silver Heights <laughs> Bird Park. Brent, thank you so much. My